Hi guys, today we will build a Telegram chatbot that can connect to a local database and perform crude operations. Let's take a closer look at uh, what uh, will be our final product. Let's start the bot and do a insert command. So we insert, for example, 10 bottles. So we insert bottle and the number and the quantity uh, will be 10. So order correctly inserted. Now, for example, let's uh, insert another um, order. So for example, we want 15 pen. All right, now let's select all or all the orders that we have previously inserted inside our database. So the bot um, give, us the, give us all the information that he has inside the database. So, for example, now let's update the first uh, order, so the one with the, um, the ID 2. And we don't want uh, 10 bottle, but we want 20 of them, for example. So, order with ID 2 is correctly updated. So, if we select again, the uh, first order is correctly updated. Now, um, let's delete, for example, an order. So we delete the uh, order with the ID 2. Let's delete one. Let's, let, let's delete it. And then we select again. As you can see, the um, order with ID 2 is actually deleted. So um, this is what we will build. As we already have said, the database is a local one. So we can open it with a program called DB Browser. Now, if we go inside our main table, which is called orders, we can find all the orders that uh, the user have inserted uh, using actually the bot. So for example, if we insert again 20 bottle and we refresh our page, the, uh, the new record is added inside this table. So this actually is a local database. First of all, let's analyze our main folder where all the files are inserted. Um, this folder called Telegram Bot Local Database has two subfolders called database, where the database is actually located, and then the, um, another one called sessions. Next, we have two important files called config.ini, where all the configurations are, will be inserted, and the script.py, where all the code that the Telegram chatbot execute is located. Um, of course, you can uh, just copy my, um, the, repo, the repository from my uh, GitHub. And this is the link. I will insert this link, of course, in the description of the video. All right, let's start by writing uh, some uh, code. Um, the editor that I am using to um, write Python script is called Visual Studio Code. And I'm executing the, uh, uh, Python, the Python script um, inside uh, an, a local environment uh, with Anaconda. Now, let's open the folder called bot local database inside uh, Visual Studio Code and uh, um, let's open the scripts.py uh, file. In this file, the first thing we have to do is to import all the libraries that we need to actually uh, um, write some code. The first library is the config parser library and we will use this library to uh, import all the um, configuration, all the configuration that we need in order to start actually the bot. Once we have imported all the libraries that we need, we just need to initialize all the configuration. So we get the API ID, the API hash, and the bot token from the file called config.ini, and then we specify a, a session name. In, in this case, the session name is just called bot. And then by uh, calling the start method of the Telegram client import, we start 
the token by passing the session name, the API ID, and the API hash. I forgot to mention that the API ID must be a numeric value, and, and the API hash and the bot token are alphanumeric values. Now, the value that you are seeing here are just for, for the test. I write it randomly. Uh, but uh, you need to insert the correct one, of course, uh, by uh, following the, uh, the, the link in the description. Let's create our main function. <coughs> now, the first thing we need to do is to initialize the local database. So we just choose a name for the uh, database, which in this case will be test database uh, that are uh, insert that is inserted inside the folder called database and then we connect to uh, that database with this line of code using of course the um, connect method of sqlite free library now uh, the, the next thing we need to do is to create uh, the cursor the cursor, the cursor is an instance using which we can invoke methods that execute sqlite statement and fetch data from the result set uh, of the queries. Now, the next, the next thing we need to do is to create a table. So we create a table if that table doesn't exist, called orders. Uh, the fields of this table are the ID, which is an integer, which will be the primary key, and of course, an auto increment primary key and then we have the product the product name the quantity and the last edit which which is just a date now all these three um, fields are all bar char so are all string and are length 200 300 and 100 next we execute this uh, query which will cr actually create the table and then we just start the uh, client we start the bot using uh, the method called run until disconnect so now let's create our first command which is the start command as you can see when the client which is actually the bot receives a new message starting by the pattern slash start this is a regex that is case insensitive so the slash start is case insensitive by adding this regex, this regex at the beginning of the string. Then, if uh, a new message actually starts starts with the slash start string, uh, the bot execute this function called start. The first thing we do inside this function is to get the sender of the message, and then we just send a text. Um, uh, which is hello i can do crud operations inside a local database and then we just send this message by calling the method the send message of the client which is actually of course the bot now as you can see the um, folder called database is just empty we only have the git keep file which is in this case useless for us uh, but if we start our uh, code we execute our code as you can see the test database is actually created so we can open it with the db browser program and of course we can find our table called orders and it's just an, an empty table with the field that we have previously inserted now let's analyze the insert method as before, when the client, when the bot, receives a new message that starts with the pattern slash insert, we execute this function. So the first thing, thing we need to do is to get, as always, the sender of the message. And then we need to get the information that the user um, sent with the insert method. So the first thing we need to do is to split the uh, message that the user sends. So for example, if the user sends slash insert bottle 10, we split by the space. So in the first element of the list, we get the product. Uh, on the second element, we get the quantity. Next, we just need to get 
the uh, daytime of uh, today, not actually the, the daytime, just the date of uh, today in the format day, month, and year. And then we um, create a tuple, uh, which, is co uh, which is called params. Um, and inside the params, we, we set the product, the quantity, and the string. Of course, we need to um, set uh, um, this order of the field because when we created our orders um, table we have inserted the id the product the quantity and the last edit so the order is very very important next we just create the command which is insert into the table name which is order the values null and we set the null because the id is auto increment and that is the primary key of that table and then we insert the value product here the quantity here and the, and the um, date time actually just the date here we execute the command uh, passing, of course, the params that we have previously, previously set, and then we commit the changes inside our database. Now, if at least one row is aff affected by the query, we send a specific message. So, for example, order correctly inserted. Or if something uh, went wrong, we just, say, we, uh, we just say something went wrong, please try again. And then we, we wrap all the code that we have uh, written inside a try catch, a try except uh, statement. Let's move on and analyze another method, which which will be the select method. Now this query select all the orders inside the table called orders, and then of course we fetch all the result. Now, if at least one row is selected, we print a message with a list of all the orders. And the message is created using the function define above, which is called create message select query. Now, th this is just a fancy way to, um, to print our result as you have seen at the beginning of the video. So the query in this case is very, very simple. We fetch the result and we handle this result inside a for loop. Of course, the first, um, the first field will be the ID, the second field will be the product, the third field will be the quantity, and the fourth will, will be the creation date. And then we just create a text um, with this line of code. Again, this is just a fancy way to um, propose all the orders that are selected inside the table. As always, we, uh, we wrap every, every code that we have written inside a try except statement. Let's move to the update method, which is a little bit uh, difficult uh, than the others. The first thing is, as always, to get the sender of the message and um, is to get all the information that we need from the text inserted by the user. Now, an example, an, an example input um, will be slash update one bottle 20. So we are update the row with ID one and we set the new product, which is bottle and the new um, quantity, which is actually 20. So in the so if we split by the space in the second element of the user input is the ID. In this case is one on, on the first element, of course, will be the slash update um, string on the second will be the new product and and on the third will be the new quantity that the, the user have uh, uh, written now we just get the um, the date time from now using this line of code and we uh, format um, the date time in date month a year as before again and then we create the, the table params with the id the new product the new quantity the new uh, last edit date, let's say. And then we need to set again the ID because in this query, which is this one, we must have a where clause because we need to update a specific um, row. So we need to set this value 
where the ID is the ID that the user have inserted. Now, of course, if the, that ID is not present in the table, uh, so if the row count of the courses is less than one, we, we just say that the order with the, with the ID, the ID, of course, that the user have sent is not present. Or uh, if everything is okay, we just say order with ID is correctly updated. Now let's analyze the delete method. As always, we get the sender of the message and then we get the user input um, because we need to get the ID that the user wants to uh, delete. Um, now, of course, uh, for example, if the user says slash delete one, we need to get this number by splitting by the space and of course getting the, the second element. Now, the query for the delete is this one. And then, uh, and of course, we delete from the table called orders, the ID um, that the user have sent. Now we execute again this query, passing, of course, the ID that the user have sent, and then we commit the changes to the uh, database. Now, again, if at least one row is affected by the query, we send a specific message, otherwise we send another message which is, for example, uh, the order with ID uh, that the user have sent is not present. Now, um, of course, uh, we have seen that uh, and th these are the basis of uh, the crude operation. Of course, uh, we should say, we should uh, check if the ID that the user have sent is actually a number and not just a, a string, for example. So take this as a base. All right, the video is finished. Um, now let's check again if everything works. We just need to um, start the bot and then we can play with it because we can insert uh, something of quantity 50, for example. Now, if we check the database, the order is actually here inside. Let's create another order. Let's insert uh, some glasses. That's for example 80 and then if we update the, the database of course we have another row now let's delete the number with row 2 and then update and then of course we can play with it again guys thank you for watching i'm uh, alessio and i hope you have uh, a nice day bye